We're about three weeks away from the beginning of the 2019-20 NBA season. A lot of things can still happen, but mostly we know the projected starting lineups for each NBA team. It's a bit too early for division previews and a full-blown season preview, which will no doubt be available on this channel, so subscribe now, watch other videos and stick around. But it's not too early to look at those lineups and figure out which player from the projected starting lineup is the weakest link on every team. Hey guys, Purple Prince is with you again, and there are 30 teams to cover, so let's start. Before we start though, I'd like to mention that these aren't my projected lineups. I use the projected starting lineups from fadeawayworld.net, so if you have a problem with the players, just ring them up. I'm not at fault. Okay, let's go. Atlanta Hawks, Alex Len. Alex Len is the projected starting center for the Atlanta Hawks, and while he's a six season veteran by now, it doesn't really feel like he's been around that long. One of the reasons is that he just hasn't been that good. Drafted by the Phoenix Suns with the 5th pick, Alex Len has somewhat failed the expectations. Standing at 7 foot 1 and weighing at 250 pounds, Len pretty much has the physical tools to be a dominant big man, but somehow he hasn't been that. Last season for Atlanta he had his highest scoring output with 11.1 points per game, but for a man his size he averaged only 5.5 rebounds. He's been a borderline starter for his whole career, and there's a lot of unknown with DeAndre Hunter because he's yet to step foot on a court in a real NBA game, but just based off his potential and what Alex has failed to do so far, I'd say that Alex Len will be Atlanta's weakest link. Boston Celtics Enos Cantor It's hard to put Enos on this list because he has a lot of offensive skills, but I have to be fair. Kemba Walker is the new darling of Boston, and I think that Gordon Hayward will bounce back this season. Jalen Brown has to step up for sure, but he will at least defend. And Jason Tatum should be the face of Boston for years to come. Which leaves us with Enos Cantor, a really talented player who just doesn't defend. I chose Cantor also because of who left the Celtics, and that's Al Horford. A willing defender, a great defender to be honest, and he's gonna be replaced by a guy who's known for his bad defense. Brooklyn Nets, DeAndre Jordan. This one might come as a surprise considering that I'm talking about a player who just two years ago was an all-star, in 2016 was on first team all NBA and has been a member of first team all defense two times. The problem is, that was in 2016. Last year his defense was bad, especially with the Mavericks. A lot of NBA analysts noted that and additionally there were reports of selfish behavior and scuffles with teammates. All that resulted in a trade to the New York Knicks, where he also wasn't so well received. Now he's a part of the Brooklyn Nets, who have high expectations. He has a good friend in KD there and maybe it will be different, but let's not expect the old defensive player of the year candidate type of player. He doesn't play on the perimeter, can't hit a shot out of the paint and can't guard the paint as well as he used to. I could have named Rodion Skouritz as the weakest link, but based on his potential and versatility, I think he could be a bigger part of the Nets going forward. Charlotte Hornets Dwayne Bacon Oh man, trying to name the weak link on the Hornets would be like choosing who you want to be left with in a dark room, Freddy, Jason or Pennywise. Or in other words, the team is just weak and there are a lot of weak links. Cody Zeller in my opinion is not a quality center. Nicholas Batum is not that good anymore and I'm very tempted to name Terry Rozier here as he got, in my opinion, a horrible contract for a guy who hasn't even shot 40% from the field in 4 seasons he's been in the league. But considering the investment, I guess he's supposed to be the best player on Charlotte Hornets. For now, Dwayne Bacon is possibly the weakest starter on the Hornets. Why? Because he's barely started any games. The sample size is small as he's been around for just two seasons. Last year, he averaged 7.3 points. That's the starting shooting guard. Not good. Chicago Bulls, Chris Dunn. Even though the Bulls have been a bad team for years, there actually is some quality talent on the team. The weakest link on the team right now is the projected starting point guard, Chris Dunn. Last year, Dunn was a starter for 44 out of 46 games he played and averaged 11.3 points and 6 assists. He's not a bad player, it's just that the league and most teams have very good to great point guards. Steph Curry, Harden, 
Westbrook, Damian Lillard, Kyrie. He'll have to go against those players and right now he doesn't seem equipped to do so. He's been a so-so player for 3 years and maybe there's a reason for that, not just the fact that he was playing on a bad team. Cleveland Cavaliers Colin Sexton or Darius Garland I might seem harsh by putting a second year player as the weakest link, that's why I'm mentioning Darius Garland as well. Sexton is not that good of a passer. Last year, as a starter, he averaged just 3 assists in almost 32 minutes. If you start Garland at the point, you get a player who averaged 2.6 assists in college. Both choices are not great. Jetty Osman might not be a star. Kevin Love hopefully gets back to the all-star level. Tristan Thompson with all his limitations is still a monster on the offensive glass. And while both young players might have a great deal of potential, the three other starters, for now, are more proven commodities in the NBA. Dallas Mavericks Dwight Powell Dallas is one of the teams that I'll like to monitor closely next year. Not just because Porzingis is my brother from Latvia, but also because this team has so much young talent and potential. One of not so young players is the projected starting center, Dwight Powell. The 7 year veteran has started only 52 games during this period and last year had his best year with 10.6 points and 5.3 rebounds. Mostly in his career, he's been a bench player. He doesn't block too many shots and his offense isn't that polished as well. For now, he figures to be the weak link on an otherwise exciting Dallas team. Denver Nuggets Will Barton Jokic is the star of the team. Jamal Murray is a great up and coming talent. Paul Millsap is a great locker room presence and a very good player still. And Gary Harris is one of team's best shooters. The only logical choice is the 9 year veteran Will Barton. At 28 years old, he doesn't have the potential of other guys, but he's proven to be a quality contributor nonetheless. This one sucks because Barton isn't a bad player, it's just that he's caught on a team with abundance of talent. Detroit Pistons Tony Snell Reggie Jackson? Not great but okay. The big man can be put on this list, so that leaves a choice between Bruce Brown and Tony Snell. I go with Snell here. He's been just an okay player. He has improved as a shooter, but he's not a starter material. Bruce Brown also hasn't proven himself as a starter yet, but Tony Snell has been in the league for 6 years and he has started about half of his games and the results haven't been good. He's played around 30 minutes per game in his best seasons, but still hasn't produced one double digit point season. Enough said. Golden State Warriors Glenn Robinson From an all-star starting lineup to this. With the departure of Kevin Durant and losing Klay Thompson to injury, Warriors don't boast that same scary starting lineup from last year. Last year their best player was their small forward Kevin Durant. Now their weakest link is their small forward, Glenn Robinson, who up until now has started in only 51 games through 5 years of his career. Last year he averaged 4.2 points. So yeah, good luck with that. Houston Rockets Daniel House the Rockets will be different this year. There's a Harden Westbrook reunion happening, but they've pretty much retained all the main pieces from their last year's squad, including the 34 year old starting power forward PJ Tucker. Even at an advanced age, Tucker is still a quality player. The weakest link here might be Houston's projected starting small forward Daniel House. Fourth year player has started only 16 games in his career, 13 of them came last year when he averaged 9.4 points and 3.6 rebounds. It's not super bad, but on a starting lineup filled with max players, he's the weakest link. Indiana Pacers DeMontis Sabonis This one is so hard. The Pacers predictably lost their starting small forward from last year Bojan Bogdanovic. And what a forward he was, one of the best shooters in the league. Now with the addition of Malcolm Brogdon their point guard situation seems to be resolved, but they replaced the best player from last year with another quality small forward and similarly great shooter in TJ Warren. Turner is the anchor in the middle and Oladipo is coming back, so the only choice here should be DeMontis Sabonis, a hard working energy player who almost never would be the worst starter on any other team. On the bright side, if your worst player averages 14 and 10, you have a hell of a starting lineup. Los Angeles Clippers Patrick Beverly Wow, what a summer did they have. They quite possibly have the best starting lineup when you take into account defense and lots of it. 
This team will be contending for the NBA championship. George and Leonard are the untouchables. Jermichael Green and Harrell had solid seasons, especially Harrell. That leaves us with Patrick Beverly, a fan favorite and a tenacious defender, who unfortunately is the weak link here. He won't be asked to do much besides defense, as the Clippers have loads of offense now. And I'm sure he'll do great, but strictly skill-wise, he's the weakest starter. Los Angeles Lakers, Rajon Rondo. This one's a bit of a mystery as there were reports that LeBron would be the starting point guard, Kuzma might be somehow uncertain in the starting lineup, an injury to DeMarcus Cousins, a loads of reports, but the projected lineup right now features Rondo at the point. Which isn't good considering that we're not in 2010. You could make a case for Dwight Howard, but in my opinion he can still ball, and he could be a perfect complementary piece to AD and LBJ. Rondo on the other hand is kind of old news when it comes to point guard position. He can pass the ball whole day, but with LeBron on the team that's not as necessary as it would be on other teams. And what do we need from our guards? Shooting. Rondo isn't very good at that, so if he is the starting point guard, he's the weakest link. Memphis Grizzlies Dylan Brooks Ok, where do we start? Jean Morant will have his hands full trying to replicate what Mike Conley did for the Grizzlies for so many years. Valanciunas is a quality center, but with his own limitations, and to be honest, I'd gladly put the whole starting unit here as the weak link, cause it's so hard for me to say who of them is the strong link. If I absolutely have to make a choice, which I do, I think I'm going with Dylan Brooks. He did not have a good year last season, and although Jake Crowder is really really close as far as the weakest link, I guess he's more proven at this point. I don't know, you help me with this. Miami Heat, Dion Waiters or Kelly Olynyk. This one I don't know as well. Olynyk has been mostly a bench player. He's developed somewhat of a respectable shot, but not really, and Dion Waiters has been in the league for 7 years, and time and time again he's proven that he's not a starter as well. His shot is streaky, he's not that good of a defender, and considering all the great guards around the league, he mostly has a tough time scoring or defending. Help me with this as well guys, I don't know which one's worse. Milwaukee Bucks, Wesley Matthews All these guys are valuable in their own way, but Wesley Matthews might be the worst just because his contributions are so much more dependent on others. He's probably the 4th or 5th scoring option in the starting lineup, and besides shooting he provides defense which isn't as good as it used to be. Bledsoe is a candidate if we talk about the worst starting point guards, but he's kind of okay for what they need and Brook Lopez had a great year with the Bucks last season, so I can't put him on here. Sorry Wesley, but on the Bucks, you're kind of a weak link. Minnesota Timberwolves, Josh Akogi. I would really love to put Wiggins as the weakest link. Ok, so how do I call a guy who has started all his career games, was drafted number 1, has averaged 19.4 points for his career, the weakest link on the team? It's simple, because so much more was expected from him. He was touted the next LeBron James, and yet 5 years in the league he's been very ineffective. He's not defending and he can't shoot. He doesn't get to the free throw line and in my eyes his point totals is more about being on a bad team where he's one of the highest paid players rather than him really being that good. They paid him max dollars, they're supposed to use him, but doing so limits the team's success. It's been 5 years guys, he's just not that good. There probably are worse players on the starting unit right now like Josh Akogi, but when we compare expectations to actual production, the Wiggins choice would make some sense. New Orleans Pelicans, Derek Favors. Zion is gonna sell the tickets, Lonzo is gonna pass them to Zion, Ingram will cash in a few of those and Drew Holiday will be that great veteran who defends and helps. What is Favors gonna do? He's just gonna be that good old average center with a stat line of 11 and 7 or 7-11 who helps but not really takes you over the hump. With all the names that joined the Pelicans in the offseason, it's not crazy to think that if everyone hits on their potential, Derek Favors is the one who's the weakest link in here. New York Knicks Dennis Smith Jr. With so many bad things happening to the Knicks and so many young players on the team, it's almost unfair to pick the weak link here. Julius Randle was the big summer signing. Mitchell Robinson, still young but very promising as a defensive center, 
and how do I grade RJ Barrett properly if he hasn't played a minute of NBA action? Dennis Smith actually could be the weak link here, and it's been a while since New York has had a proper point guard. That Neely Keene experiment didn't go too well, and so far Dennis Smith hasn't had that great of a career. Right now he's not an effective scorer, not a good free throw shooter, and not a good shooter in general. That's a bad combination in this era of great point guards. Oklahoma City Thunder Andre Robertson This team has changed dramatically over the summer, and a lot of things should still change. But as it stands now, if Andre Robertson started small four, it's a wrap. He's the weakest link for sure. First of all, he's had some injury problems lately, so we're not sure if he's even gonna be there. And secondly, isn't it about time to develop some sort of a shot? The dude shot 22.2% from the three and 31.6% from the free throw line last year. That's weak. Orlando Magic, DJ Augustine. At this point, DJ Augustine shouldn't be a starter on any NBA team, even the Orlando Magic. He's a career bench player for a reason. Orlando has some potential in the unit and hopefully for Orlando, Markel Fultz shaves that bust tag from his name and becomes the future point guard of the Orlando Magic. Augustine had his moments in the playoffs, and he's not a scrub, but he's not a starter material as well. Philadelphia 76ers, Josh Richardson. This is probably the best weak link you could have. We won't touch the big three of Philadelphia and the signing of Al Horford was a great move that should help. Al Horford could be in decline and as the season goes this might change, but for now Josh Richardson is the weak link on Philadelphia 76ers. He's young though, he will get better, but this team's starting lineup is just so stacked. Sorry Josh. Phoenix Suns, Ricky Rubio. This one is hard for me to say, cause Ricky Rubio is a dear dear friend of mine. But how come that he's been in the NBA for 8 years and hasn't played as good as he was playing during the 2019 FIBA World Championship? In all seriousness though, Phoenix finally has a competent point guard. A point guard who will really pass the ball. I was very impressed with how Ricky Rubio played during the FIBA World Cup. I just can't put that one mirage of a deadly 3 point shot over other youngsters on this team. Portland Trailblazers Zach Collins Hopefully Whiteside regains his form as the Defensive Player of the Year candidate, and if he does then Zach Collins is the weakest link on the team. Over two years he has started only once and last year averaged 6.6 .6 points and 4.2 rebounds. He's yet to develop a deadly accuracy outside the paint and he might have a hard time under the basket. He's young and will improve, but for now, he's the weakest link on the Trailblazers. Sacramento Kings Dwayne Dedman For the first time in a while, Sacramento actually features some good young talent, which can actually battle for a playoff spot. One player that doesn't really fit that tag is the 30-year-old Dwayne Dedman. He was the starting center for the Atlanta Hawks for two years, but really doesn't jump off the map as that highly skilled big man. He's solid, but on a team filled with some exciting prospects and a small forward with championship pedigree, he figures out to be the weakest link. Still, 11-7 is nothing to sneeze at. San Antonio Spurs Jakob Pohl Before suffering a season-ending injury, DeJounte Murray was supposed to be the next Tony Parker for the Spurs. Two All-Stars in DeRozan and Aldridge are untouchable here and the choice really comes down to Derek White and Jakob Pohl. White filled in pretty admirably at the point guard spot for the Spurs last year, so I'm going with the projected starting center Jakob Pottl here. He did start 24 games, but besides that, he hasn't really been seen yet as a starting force. He was very good in his bench minutes last year though, and is the Spurs, so everyone is pretty equal in there. Toronto Raptors OG Ananobi Marc Gasol still has some gas in the tank and the team, even after losing Kawhi Leonard, is pretty solid with always good point guard Kyle Lowry and the emerging Pascal Siakam. Norman Powell and OG Ananobi are a different story. Both players came off the bench last year, but for now, Norman Powell will be able to bring more of what they lost through the summer, and that's 3-point shooting. When it's all said and done, Ananobi might be the better player out of the two. But for now, he will have to fill Leonard's shoes and the production from small forward position will see quite a drop off compared to last season. Utah Jazz, 
Jeff Green. The Jazz improved their weakest position from last year by acquiring the overpaid and underrated at the same time Mike Conley. They also added some great shooting for their small forward position and they still have Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. A pretty clear weak link here is their projected starting power for Jeff Green. He's always been solid but at the same time he's just too streaky, which is why this will be his seventh team. He would be a solid sixth man but as a starter his best days are probably over. And Washington Wizards, Troy Brown. The starting unit for the Wizards is just so weak. John Wall is still injured and besides Bradley Beal we might as well put the other four starters as the weakest link. Their center is young and unproven, they will start a journeyman in Ish Smith as their point guard and Davis Bertans is a great shooter but that was in San Antonio. With all the uncertainty surrounding the Wizards, the biggest uncertainty might be their projected small forward Troy Brown. He played just 14 minutes per game last year, isn't really known for his shooting ability and started just 10 games last year. On a weak team, he's probably the weakest link. That's life. Thanks for watching the video guys, this was a long one but I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think about my choices? Do you agree with my opinion? I'd like for you to disagree with some choices so we could have a healthy discussion. Which team has the worst starting lineup? Which team has the best one? Please leave a comment below. Also, share this video with your friends, like the video and watch other videos on this channel. There's a lot of content out here for everybody. Oh, almost forgot. Please subscribe to the channel and don't miss videos in the future. Thanks. See you soon. This was Purple Prince and I'm out.